This is the Talking About the Hoosiers podcast, presented by HoosierIllustrated.com. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Talking About the Hoosier podcast, presented by HoosierIllustrated.com. I'm joined by Kyler Staley, I'm Drew Rosenberg, and we have a new series starting today, the Indiana Basketball 2023-2024 Player Recap. And we're going to be starting with Xavier Johnson, Anthony Walker. Kyler, I know you've been waiting a while to do this series, so great yeah. we're finally getting on it. Yeah, I know. We uh, It's just so funny. We're so bad about saying, hey, we'll be back next week. And then, uh, you know, it's just every other week. But no, I, I have been excited to do this series. I wish we could have done it sooner. But, you know, man, the portal, it's it's a crazy thing to keep up with. And you're always on edge a little bit with it. And obviously with recruiting and AAU about to start back up. Um, then you throw in my travel last week to the NABC show, which was pretty, pretty awesome. So um But, yeah, no, I'm excited for this. We're going to have four episodes, if I remember the math correctly. Um, Not going to talk about the transfers, the C.J. Gunn, Caleb Banks, Peyton Sparks. I think we're just going to kind of move them off to the side because, obviously, they're not going to be back next year. They're not going to the NBA. So, um, But wish those guys really just a lot of luck um, moving forward and everything. But we'll talk about most of the guys, the recaps, what's next um, for those guys, and uh, we'll just kind of, you know, go from there and, We'll just see how this series works out. Yeah, so I think we're going to start with uh, Xavier Johnson, who I guess <laughs> it's hard to describe Xavier Johnson without using the word polarizing. I mean, mm-hmm. he's had so many ups and downs, just even in his three years at Indiana. Started off his career at Pittsburgh, averaged a career-high 15.5 a game as a freshman, along with four and a half assists, then 14 and almost six assists his last year there. And while his re- first year at Indiana was really good, 12-5, and five, kind of had the drop off this year was his worst statistic worst year statistically 7.6 points per game 2.8 assists and only 2.6 rebounds but as we know battled injuries had a couple of some you know an injection or two some poor flagrants so just kind of I guess what were your overall takeaways from X this year yeah I mean super I mean polarizing is just the best word you can think of um Xavier Johnson, you know, he had been in college for a long, long time. And you go back to uh, two years ago um, when he suffered his, I think it was the foot injury um, at Kansas, and uh, it, it took away from his first senior year. So it was a lot of expectations and it was a lot of excitement that when he was able to be approved by the NCAA to play a sixth year for Indiana, it was really just awesome to see and awesome to hear because you got to, you, you know, in your head, you're thinking, okay, this guy's got a chance to finish out his college career strong. Um, he's going to be the senior leader of this team that they, they, Indiana's got for a young team that got a senior point guard that's been around the block that knows what Mike Woodson wants. Um, and, you know, it started off the year. Um, I thought he was okay for the most part to start off yeah. the year. If I can remember all the way back in the fall, that feels like 10 years ago um, in my head. But I, I thought he was okay. You know, obviously with Indiana, it was a yeah, um, it was a lot of <laughs> mismatching and, you know, just trying to figure out, you know, what works for that team. And it was just a lot of weird pieces at first. And, I mean, it was kind of weird pieces throughout the year, but they just got better and they meshed a lot well. But Xavier Johnson was just there. Um, and then the injury happens with Harvard. I think that's where um, he got hurt the first time this year, yeah. um, if I remember correctly. And mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember if it was an ankle or a foot. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. But, um, you know, things just kind of went downhill from there. And it was really heartbreaking to see because he missed multiple, multiple games. And then, obviously, he comes back for a little bit, I think two or three games, plays. He's not Xavier Johnson in the way that you wanted him to be. He's not that senior leader that you needed, and uh, he wasn't that playmaker. He was just kind of there, and he was just really, really rusty, trying to figure out yeah. how to, you know, what his positioning was in this Indiana team, and obviously the flagrants were there and the cheap shots and things like that. It just was not good for this team, and then he gets hurt, hurt again. I think it was a dislocated elbow. Um, this is a few games after that, but he was able to finish out his career playing. I think he played the last five, six games somewhere around there, um, which was good to see, but you know, it just, it wasn't the season that you wanted for Xavier Johnson in a lot of ways. It's good that he got to finish out his career, you know, towards the end there, his college career. Cause I think he really deserved that. And, um, you just kind of wonder what this Indiana team could have been with a healthy Xavier Johnson. You know what I mean? Just, you know, a consistent Xavier Johnson. You know, I think they win at least two more games somewhere around there, and they might even be an NCAA tournament team with a healthy Xavier Johnson. But it's just kind of, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda in that way. So um, it's tough to see overall, but, you know, he got to finish out his career. So that that's the positive note. 
Yeah, the way I would describe his season, I guess, when he was good, he was really, really good for Indiana. But when he was bad, he was really bad. And, I mean, you can find examples of both. He had a game against Army, second game of the year, 19 points, five assists. His second game back from the first injury against Ohio State at 18 points, three assists, three rebounds. Some really good games there. But then you also go to the very next game after the Ohio State game on the road at Rutgers, five turnovers, two points, just not a good performance there. So it was kind of one of those things. It was really just looked like he was trying to find comfort on the floor, find that rhythm that he really had lacked because since his first year in Indiana, he really hadn't played consistent game time. It had been just injury after injury after that first broken foot against Kansas. So for a player of Xavier Johnson that's so burst-reliant, it's hard. I mean, you look at his game, it's all about quickness, change of direction, and a foot injury, a lower leg. Those are all injuries that really take away from what he wants to do. And he struggled to get back to the Xavier Johnson we saw his first year in Bloomington. Yeah, you just when you go back to that Kansas game two years ago, you know, in hindsight, you didn't realize how significant that was going to be. Obviously, you know, for the rest of that year, Indiana turned it up. Jalen Hoshafino, Trace Jackson Davis took over that team and they played really well. And that's also another what if, you know, what would have been like if Xavier Johnson played those two years, played two years ago, a full season? Would Jalen Hoshafino be back for Indiana? Because I don't think Jalen Hoshafino would be a first round pick. At that point, not not saying Jalen Hutchipino wasn't good enough, but the way the offense was revolved around Xavier Johnson, how ball heavy he was, ball dominant, um, you just kind of wonder, you know, it could have been a lot of what ifs um, when you really look at it. And it revolves around Xavier Johnson's injury. It really does with the last two years. So, you know, Mike Woodson always talked about when we were on Zoom calls and things like that, he would always be like, you know, I go to bed you know, at night just wondering what this team would look like with a healthy Xavier Johnson. And you're right, when he hurts his foot, a lower leg injury like that, a player with so much explosiveness like Xavier Johnson on the ball, a guy that can change direction in an instant, um, a guy that likes to get downhill and push the pace, you know, that hurts him. That really, really hurts him. And it hurt the team really too because I think going back to the start of the season, Mike Woodson really wanted to play fast, wanted to play out in transition. Losing Xavier Johnson, that's hard to do because, you know, you've got Gabe Cuffs and you got Trey Galloway, but they're not the fastest players on the floor. Xavier Johnson is an extremely quick, dynamic guard, and, you know, it just kind of slowed down things for Indiana in kind of a bad way. So um, you nailed it on the head. When Indi- when when Xavier Johnson was bad, um, Indiana was very, very bad. The turnovers were a problem, very frustrating to watch. Um, but when he was on and he was taking care of the ball and he's making the plays and just playing like a senior leader – this Indiana team was completely different. So it's a lot of what ifs with Xavier Johnson, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, it, it, it sucks to see. But you, it, you just kind of got to, you know, move forward when you look at yeah. it. Yeah, I think when you look back at that season before the foot injury against Kansas, two of Indiana's best wins on the road at Xavier, home against UNC, on the road against Xavier, Xavier Johnson against Xavier, 23.7 rebounds was – Huge in that victory. And then against UNC at home, 20 points, eight rebounds, four assists, two steals. So, like, when he was good, he really elevated Indiana. But just it was unfortunate to see how injuries kind of plagued his the back half of his career. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you talked about the Xavier, the Xavier game, Xavier Johnson. That's one of my favorite Xavier Johnson games. I love that game. Um, just a really, really tough, cont- con- like, you know, back and forth game on the road. Indiana got the dub, and a lot of that was because of Xavier Johnson. Let's go back three years ago. I, I think Xavier Johnson, when you think about what he's going to be remembered for, um, you know, he's going to be that Big Ten run three years ago, Michael, yeah. his first year. Indiana doesn't make the NCAA tournament without that play from Xavier Johnson. And Mike Woods will be the first one to tell you it was Xavier Johnson. And you got to give Trace Jackson Davis a lot of credit there too, because he turned up his play there too. But Xavier Johnson was arguably the best point guard um, at the, in the nation at that time. You can honestly make that argument, just that three game stretch where he was playing, what he was doing on the floor. It was awesome. It was awesome to see. So, um, you know, you kind of look at his legacy at Indiana. I think it just sums down to what if. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but you got to appreciate what he brought every time. The dude loves the game of basketball, and it was really, really tough on him. You saw a lot of depression in him um, when he wasn't playing ball, but he was always a really, really good teammate too. And he was almost like another coach on the floor because he yeah. saw the game in different yeah. ways. And um, you kind of look in the future there. I, I think the one guy that's going to benefit from Xavier having Xavier Johnson at least for a year is Gabe Cups because he had to go up against him for most of the time, you know, going back to last summer and everything. And I think he was a really, really good mentor 
two game cups. So you just kind of got to take that toughness that Xavier Johnson had. You just got to push forward. But uh, I, I think if you're an Indiana fan, you'll always be appreciative of what he kind of brought to the game when he was healthy. Um, it just sucks to see that you just never saw, uh, you know, the full potential with Xavier Johnson. Yeah, couldn't say it better myself there. Now we're going to go to the other senior, Anthony Walker. Only played one year at Indiana after playing four years at Miami, including uh, one of those years where he actually beat Indiana in the round of 32 that uh, last year. But Anthony Walker was, I guess, it was an interesting thing with him because he kind of came in. No one really knew what his role was going to be. Hadn't really played much since his sophomore year at Miami. And then comes in and was one of the leading guys off the bench for Mike Woodson all year. Yeah. Um, you know, Anthony Walker, I, you kind of mentioned it. It's like you really didn't know what to get. You knew he was going to be part of the front court. And honestly, you didn't really know his style of play unless you really followed Miami. I mean, me personally, when they were recruiting Anthony Walker, I really didn't know a whole lot about Anthony Walker. If I'm going to be honest, I had to watch a lot of film on him and just kind of read up on him to see what kind of role he would bring. And Honestly, I think the role that he brought with this team was just that savvy vet. Um, I always felt like when he was on the floor, he was one of the more calm players on the floor um, in the front court. And he was actually a front court leader for the most part. I know he came off the bench. Um, I don't think he ever started a game, if I can remember correctly, but um, maybe he did. I think he had one start. I can't remember what game, though. Okay, it had to have been with Malik or Kalel out for some reason. Yeah. I know Mike Woodson really liked to go with Peyton Sparks in the starting um, starting five when one of those two bigs were out. But anyway, I, I thought he was just really good. And he always tried to bring energy on the floor. You know, there were some inconsistent plays with him throughout the year. But I, I think at the start of the year, when he really, really turned it on, I think he ended up having a career high um, playing for Indiana, if I remember correctly. And I can't even remember what game that was. I think it was sometime. Well, Moorhead State. Moorhead State. 18 and 9. Yeah. So almost a double double there. And he was really good. And there were a lot of games I felt like where. Anthony Walker was winning games for them um, yeah. and without his play. I think the Moorhead State game is actually a perfect example of that. I don't yeah. think Indiana was going to win that game without Anthony Walker. He played phenomenal. Um, you know, he always brought energy on the floor. Yeah. You, 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 I kind of wish you would have seen him a little bit more, at least a couple of years in Indiana, to see what he could have really done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Mike Woodson trusted him a lot, and it was just awesome to see him come in for a year. Um, and kind of be that leader that the front court really needed because Malik Renew tried to be a leader too, and he did a pretty good job, but he's only a sophomore. Kyle Ware, mm -hmm. only a sophomore. Peyton Sparks was only a junior and just was coming from a, you know, a different level of college basketball. So, you know, Anthony Walker knew what it took to win games and everything, and he was honestly just a fun guy to be around. I mean, I felt like the pressers were always great. Yeah. The energy was always great. The chemistry was always great for him, and I always felt like he was the guy that was bringing the positive attitude um, to the game. So I think he enjoyed his time in Bloomington. You kind of wish you would have got back to the NCAA tournament with him, but um, you have to give him a lot of credit for coming in for one year and just kind of, you know, playing his game and doing his job and doing what Mike Woodson asked of him. Yeah. As you said, a culture piece. I mean, he wasn't a flashy guy was someone who'd come in, make the right play. wasn't the best shooter, but he'd come in, do the hard nose stuff, rebound the basketball off the bench, give you good quality minutes off the bench, especially with Renew who battled foul trouble so often this year. He was just one of those guys. And the thing with Walker, which I think is like the huge misconception, coming into the year, people are like, oh, he wasn't that good. Well, it was like, what were your expectations for him? You look at Anthony Walker, hadn't played much at Miami in his four years there. If you were expecting him to come in, start, be a 10, 15 point per game scorer, you had the wrong idea of who he was coming in. Walker came in, stuck to his role, and really did his a great job in his role. Indiana's bench really struggled all year outside of Walker. He was like the one guy who kind of consistently impacted winning off the bench. I mean, he might not have always scored a ton of points. I think he had double figures, I think only four times all year. But it was one of those guys that he just would come in and make the right play consistently. And that was just something that Indiana needed, especially with his veteran presence in the front court with such a young front court in front of him. Yeah, and he overall, if if I remember correctly, he had a kind of a – just a rocky – career at Miami. I feel yeah. like maybe, I think it was his sophomore year. He started a lot of games as far as that yep. starting group. And then guys would come in and then he would just kind of be moved to the bench. But he was always just a really good piece for Miami all those years. And that just says a lot for him. I think he had a lot of trust in Mike Woodson to help develop his game a little bit. Um, and he wanted to finish out his career with a guy that could help him 
become a pro. You know what I mean? I don't think Anthony Walker is an NBA type of player. I could be very wrong there, but you know, I, I think he's got a really good pro career ahead of him. Um, and here's the thing that I always kind of said, especially when Anthony Walker was turning it on, um, kind of at the beginning of the year and was always that really, really consistent piece off the bench. I always felt like he was the guy that Mike Woodson wanted Jordan Geronimo to be um, in a lot of ways, an athletic player, but a smart player, a consistent player. Um, Anthony Walker's got a little bit of a rawness in him. You know, Jordan Geronimo always had some rawness in him as well, but um, I think he's the guy that, you know, Jordan Geronimo needed to be for Indiana and just never was, Um, you know, a guy that just tried to do too much on the floor and just didn't think very well. Mm -hmm on the floor, but Anthony Walker was a very, very smart player, a very savvy vet. And I think that's kind of um, how you needed to, you know, use him in a lot of ways. And I think for the development of Khalil Ware, um, Malik Renu, I think going up against a guy like Anthony Walker every day in practice um, and then just kind of learning from him. Um, I, I think that's going to be kind of his legacy there. Um, he kind of like Max Bielfeld back in the day when he played with Yogi and he had that one mm-hmm. year. Um, Anthony Walker is a guy that I kind of wish, you know, we would have seen more of in Indiana, at least for two years or so, but, um, really respect him for coming in, you know, playing for a year and everything and just kind of bringing it, um, game in and game out. So, um, you got to appreciate him for that. He's one of those guys I would have loved to have seen on a better team, I guess. Cause like, yeah. you really feel like he could have impacted winning in a more than he was able to this year. And even, I guess maybe not last year's team, just cause there was so much, so much depth and it was super crowded in the front court but really think like anthony walker like on the right team with i guess more talent maybe more camaraderie better fit like a better winning team he could have really excelled even more than he did this year yeah think about uh think about anthony walker on the trace jackson davis senior team you know him coming off the bench replace anthony walker with jordan geronimo and -hmm. then you've got malik renew and all that that's a amazing front court and that front court was already really good um, I always just liked, I always just liked Anthony Walker's energy. I really did. Mm-hmm. I always thought he always had a smile on his face and he was ready to play. And I thought he was one of the funnier guys on the team. And I'll oh. always remember, um, watching the Minnesota game. And then, of course, when he got hurt, where he thought it was really, really serious, he came out. Um, and then I think it was Khalil Ware hit that three or whatever. Then he saw Anthony Walker smiling on the bench and Khalil Ware, who's a guy that doesn't show a whole lot of emotion on the floor, you know, cracked up in a big smile and saw him. So he was just good for the team, a culture guy, like you mentioned, um, you know, he was just really good for this team and he was a good leader. So um, always going to have a lot of respect for him. Yeah. I think you watch Walker. I mean, you said it, not sure he's an NBA guy, probably not just based on what we've seen. But he's a guy that could have a very good career overseas. Just is that like make the right play type of role is less, I guess, more physical with the European basketball being more physical and less three point centric. It could be a lot better of a fit for him. But that this was, I guess, the first uh, the first edition of the Hoosier Illustrated 2023 post um, postseason player wrap up. That's a so lot I'd to say. say. Yeah, it's a it's a <laughs> mouthful actually. <laughs> Yeah, that's. Uh, but it's the only the first one, so I hopefully I'll get better as we go along. Uh, next week we have an exciting one with uh, the two leading scores, the front court, Malik Renu, Khalil Ware. But as always, thank you for tuning in to the uh, talking about the Hoosiers podcast presented by HoosierIllustrated.com. For all things IU athletics, follow Indiana underscore FRN on Twitter, Facebook, and check out the HoosierIllustrated.com website. And make sure to subscribe to both YouTube and Spotify. As always, thanks for listening, and we'll be back.